Hi friends! Today we're going to go over my wrap up for the month of December. It's great guys! I'm back. I read a total of 10 books in the month of December and I'm so freaking excited about it because I have been reading like one or two maybe three books a month for like all of July to November. I was able to read 10 books this month and yeah some of them are short some of them are kids books but I feel so great about being able to have time to read again and I'm so super excited to talk to you about these. I read my favorite book of the year this month and I am just so super excited. If you can't tell from the similar clothing and hairstyles I'm bulk filming. This is probably like the sixth video I filmed today and I just can't be bothered with changing my clothes and all of that so it's too much work for me. My stats video is taking several hours worth of work. My top 10 authors of the decade took several hours of work. You get this shirt guys okay? Let's move on. As always I start at my lowest rated and go to my highest rated and I will always link all of my full reviews on Goodreads down below in case you want to check that out and get more full thoughts where I actually have time to think about it. I don't script these out. It just whatever comes out comes out. So good luck. The first book is Let It Snow by John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Lauren Miracle and I gave this a three out of five stars. This book is about a small town and several different couples. It's three separate novellas and each story kind of leads into the next and then in the final story you get like the couples from the first two stories together and it's a whole thing. I really loved Maureen's story which was the first story. I would have given that five stars. I didn't love the second two. I'm not a huge fan of John Green's writing anyway and the main character in Lauren's story was just not super likable which I get is kind of the point to have character growth but just it wasn't my favorite thing ever. So I really loved the first story and the second two were just okay. And the really interesting thing for me is I watched the movie as well on Netflix and the first story is the one that I think has changed the most out of all of these and I still loved it. Like the way that they changed the story. I like the creative decisions that they made from the book to the movie and I have said that I think this would translate a lot better as a movie versus being a book because it's a teen rom-com rom and it just it doesn't work as a book for me but it made a really great movie and I like the decisions that they made with them. And then with a 3.25 stars we have Linger by Maggie Steve Otter. This is the second book in the Shiver trilogy. This series follows a girl who has always been obsessed with these wolves that run the woods behind her house and even as a young child she was attacked by the wolves and still her fascination has kind of continued on. And as a teenager she learns that there's more to the wolves that live behind the house than meets the eye. It involves werewolves and it's very science fiction-y and while I really loved the first book this one kind of fell flat for me. There was basically no plot. It was super slow. There was very little plot movement. The big plot twist you knew from like page 10. Fuck you know it from the cover. I mean like you know what's gonna happen before it happens and it just it was okay. I, I really liked the added sci-fi element to it but in comparison to the first book it was kind of a bummer and I've heard that the third book is even worse so yay. My next 3.25 star is A Darker Shade of Magic by B.E. Schwab. In comparing these two books I feel like that's really low because I liked this a lot better than I liked the other but that's just the way that my rating scale works. It's fine. This book follows Kel who is a magic user who has the ability to travel between alternate reality Londons. So London is one of the few cities that within all of these realities is the same in each city or at least is the same physical location as the others. And so he has this ability to travel between the three Londons and some have more magic than others and he basically travels between the kingdoms to share messages between them. And this story follows him coming into contact with a, an artifact from a London that was completely destroyed by magic and then that artifact kind of infecting his world as well. I really loved this book in the aspect of the plot and the world building. My issue with it was that the beginning felt really sluggish to me 
And I think it's because not only were we trying to get one world created, but four. And I think because Victoria was trying to explain four different worlds in one book, although the world building is impeccable and amazing, it just didn't read as quickly as I wanted it to. I'm also not the hugest fan of Lila. As a character, I feel like I kind of have an idea of where she's going to go and I'm just not in love with her character. But I do really love Cal and Rye and I definitely want to read more from this world. I do plan to continue on with it even though I feel like maybe this book could have been a little better at the beginning. But also I did this as a buddy read with Jess from Read Between the Wide and I think we kind of felt fairly similarly about it especially our feelings about Lila. My next is a 3.5 star and that is Winterwood by Shea Earnshaw. This book follows a girl in a small town named Nora who is a witch and she lives in this like mountain village that has very few homes in it. There is like a boys camp where it's not a summer camp it's a year-round school it's kind of like a boarding school but it's set at like a summer camp it's kind of weird where kids who are bad are sent and there's very few people who live in the town and she kind of gets snowed in and she as a witch has the ability to go into the winter wood into this darkest part of the forest collect things that people have lost over the years and you can only go on a specific day of the year and this is the thing that I don't understand too like you can only go on a full moon because the woods can't see you they're talking about how dark it is but a full moon is bright a new moon is dark maybe I read that wrong but it was just really confusing to me and I don't think I mentioned that in my review I think about it like every time I go to talk about the book I'm like but was it a full moon though because that's when there's light I love Shea's atmospheric writing. I always do. I love that the atmosphere is a character in and of itself and that really adds to the story. But I do feel like the story overall was pretty slow. It didn't have a lot of pacing to it. It just was kind of trickled in and it was just a really slow feeling read. I loved the twist ending. Like it was like a two-parter twist ending. Like there was a twist and then there was a twist. And so like the first twist I knew pretty early on like what was going to happen. It was that second twist. That was the one that threw me for the loop. It wasn't necessarily even a twist. It was like a plot point and I wasn't expecting it to happen. It was a plot point that I didn't know was going to happen and I expected like the twist to happen and then the book to move on from there but it was the plot that happened after that that just was like Ooh, okay. And I will say one of my favorite things about this book is the way that she wrote in the spell book. It's kind of like an epilogue without having an epilogue and it was worked in in a way that it connected with the whole rest of the story. I will say like three quarters into the book I was feeling very lackluster about it and because I had similar feelings about The Wicked Deep I was like I know I don't know I don't know that I'll read another Shea Earnshaw they're just okay and I don't know that I'll spend my time on it but after the way it ended I don't know that I'll pre-order the next one but I definitely think it's gonna be on my radar because I I do enjoy the way that she twists her endings and I'm interested. Next is a 3.75 star and that is The Girl the Sea Gave Back by Adrian Young. This is a companion novel to Sky in the Deep. If you want to read this book, if it sounds interesting to you, and you have not read Sky in the Deep, please read Sky in the Deep first. A, because in my opinion, Sky in the Deep is the superior book and I do feel like that is a consistent consensus through most people that have read both books. But also, you will spoil the entire plot of Sky in the Deep if you read that after you read this, which is weird because it's a companion novel and not part of a series. There are two main characters in this book, Tora, and I won't tell you the other name because He's a main character from the first book. They do a lot of flashbacks and the flashbacks take place during the time period of the other book. I know a couple people that read this and haven't read Sky in the Deep yet and they didn't enjoy the flashbacks as much because it involves people that they have no idea who they are. So again, highly recommend if you're going to read this, read Sky in the Deep first. Now that we have said that. I loved the characters in this but I did not enjoy the plot or the pacing. Um, they were both just kind of off. It was kind of, it kind of meandered around 
I like the idea of it, but I don't love the way that it was done. I feel like, I feel like comparison is the thief of joy. I have said that in my review because Sky in the Deep was so amazing that comparing it to this made this feel not as great. And maybe had I read this first, I would have enjoyed the aspects of it that I understood more. But again, I don't know for sure because if I didn't know the characters that I know, would I enjoy that part of it? I don't know. It's really like a big canon drum or a conundrum. I liked it. I didn't love it. I'm super excited for her next book to come out later this year because I fell in love with her writing and I just feel like this in comparison to Sky in the Deep could have been done so much better. But I think if you enjoyed the world from Sky in the Deep because this is set in the same setting, I think that you will enjoy it. You just won't love it as much. Next is It's All Downhill From Here by PJ Knight. This is the 10th book in the Creepover series. I gave this a four out of five stars. These are just cute kids books. They're quick. They're fun to read. I enjoy them. They are creepy. This one followed a girl, her best friend, and her brother on a trip to a house in the mountains. And it was fun. And then we have The Heart of Betrayal by Mary E. Pearson. This is the second book in the Remnant Chronicles. I gave this a four out of five stars. This series follows a princess who is supposed to be married off to this prince of another kingdom. And on her wedding day, rather than marry him, she runs off to the other side of her world and is a barmaid. And essentially, the prince that she was supposed to marry and an assassin from a neighboring kingdom that is against them follow her to this tavern. From the first book, you don't know which guy is which, and she kind of has like a relationship with both of them. And then you find out towards the end of that book which guy is which. And then this is the follow up to that. I really enjoyed. The first book which is a kiss of deception i really enjoyed this book as well it got very political which i love political books just very interesting read and i love the world and i love getting to learn more about the world as it moves on i have heard people say that the third book is not as good and it kind of veers off into like an opposite territory type deal but i am still interested in reading that as well and hopefully we'll get to that very soon I will say like some of the characters in this can be real dumb sometimes especially Leah like she makes some especially the beginning of this book some really dumb decisions but like she's a 17 year old girl and we all make dumb decisions and I think the thing about books is that characters do grow if they're not growing you're not doing it right so yeah they're gonna start out kind of stupid but they have to grow from that and i think that she's doing a decent amount of character growth also in this train of four star books is the 12 days of dash and lily by rachel cohen and david levithan this is a follow-up to dash and lily's book of dares which i read last year during christmas really all i can say about this book or its predecessor is that it is a cute fun book about two teens in New York City who basically travel all over the city during Christmas time and fall in love. And as someone who's never been to New York, I don't know if it's a good representation of New York, but from what I've seen from movies, it looks like a good interpretation of New York and it's just a fun time and I really enjoyed it. Next we have Sky in the Deep, which I gave a 4.75 out of 5 stars. This is by Adrienne Young. It is the novel prior to the Girl of the Seagate Back, which we just talked about a minute ago. This book follows a girl who is a member of a clan that is in mortal enemies with another clan. And the two of them basically fight due to their god and goddess and the way that history has been explained to them. And so about every seven years or so, they have what they call a fighting season. And they spend that season, everyone fighting and trying to um, appease the gods in a way. And the story follows this girl. And from the very beginning, it's like action from the first bit of the first page, which I loved. It follows her seeing her brother on the battlefield as part of the other army. She knows her brother to have been dead for several years since the last fighting season. Like she watched him die and now she's seen him fighting for the other side and it follows her trying to figure out why her brother is part of the enemy and she's captured by the enemy and has to spend some time with them and then there is a third 
clan or a third group of people that are introduced at some point that are a threat to everyone. And so it kind of follows her trying to figure out how to save not only her brother's world, but her world as well from this third group of people that are horrible. So 4.75 out of five stars. A, found family plot. I fucking love a found family plot. It is one of my favorite things ever. I am a firm believer that the people that you have blood ties with are not necessarily the people that you're gonna have the strongest relationships with during your life. I think that you can have friends and people that you find through life circumstances that are gonna be closer to you than the people that you share your DNA with. I love a fucking found family plot. B, fight scenes. Love the fucking fight scenes. Like, Adrian's fight scenes are amazing. Even in The Girl the Sea Gave Back, they were really good. They weren't as amazing, but they were still really good. One of the best parts of that book. But definitely one of the best parts of this book. Like, it starts off in the middle of a battle, and it was great. I loved getting to the action right off the bat. I loved the characters. Loved the characters so much. They're all so different, and they have... Everybody has lost people in these fighting seasons and so everyone has all of these the, this built up trauma and and they're warriors and they're healers and they're just this grand scheme of people and a world that you're trying to figure out why people are doing what they're doing and just the way the character arcs move so beautiful the world building fucking love it I love the world that Adrienne has created. It's kind of Viking-esque. I just love the world that she created and the way that she writes makes you kind of feel like you're there, like when you're inside their home and they're doing like their daily tasks and, and things, it's it's kind of like you're there and I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And I just, I just fucking loved that book, man. I just loved it. And I'm so sad that I didn't love The Girl the Sea Gate back as much. Sky in the Deep. Amazing. Highly recommend. And the final book was my only full five-star read of the year and that is Ten Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. This book follows a teenage girl who has recently broken up with her high school boyfriend and she has a large Italian family and her grandmother decides that the family is going to set her up on ten blind dates. And so this follows not only just her family deciding who is going to pick who gets to pick her dates, but it also follows the dates themselves and some are really good and some are real bad. And it's just a really, really fun, lighthearted read. There's some drama to it. Um, there are some other things that are going on with the book. I will say that if you have a hard time reading things about pregnant women having struggles through their pregnancy, that may not be a good book for you. That's really the only negative or not even negative thing but just the only really bad thing that happens. The rest of it really is just like a light fun read that I really enjoyed. It's so Christmassy and it was just a fucking joy to read. From very early on I knew who like the main romance interest would be but I don't think the book is about figuring that out. I think the book is about the main character finding herself and about her realizing how important her family is and about her relationship with her cousins and it, I think it's more about that aspect of it than it is about the romance plot which is weird because it's about ten blind dates but it, it's about so much more than that. I think if you love books about large families or books about which is funny because I was just talking about how much I love a fucking found family plot but I also love the large family like rambunctious, don't know what the hell you're gonna do with all these people and everybody's all up in your business. I also love that as well. So I'm sorry if like my arm's doing this, but Twix is sitting here and she wants to be petted. So I'm petting her because she's being a good girl. So those are most of the books that I read in the month of December. Let me know if you have read any of those. If you have any thoughts you would like to add or if you have any questions about anything, I'm always here to talk because that's why we're here. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos Mondays, Wednesdays, bonus videos on the weekends. So if you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you subscribe. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!